my daisies hi hi so in today's video we are watching a tiktok video where a lady is telling us a story about how she had a best friend for five years and the best friend hated her how did she know that this person hated her for five years the best friend confessed everything and told her everything i went to the comments on her tiktok video a lot of people did not believe her they were like oh, this story is a little bit sketchy it's a bit sus some people were like i want to hear the other person you know side of story and i don't know man it doesn't look crazy it, a lot of people were questioning as to why this friend confessed why did she confess you you mean she just confessed out of nowhere i get it and the reason why i get it is because i've seen the crazy things happen by both christians and the person who confessed was just the holy spirit has been convicting me on this and i, I ignored it for a long time i just wanted to confess and people are like mm, that is suspicious but for someone who is a christian too i think i get it i understand it and i think that's the point where people miss it the that somebody confessed is not really far-fetched anyway let's get into it story time on how i found out my best friend of five years my baby's godmother actually hated me our entire five years of being friends and yesterday she confessed to me after five years she never liked me she hated my guts the entire time and why you should vet your friendships just the same way that you vet your relationships me and this girl was friends since 2020 during the pandemic like early 2020 we met on social media i think it was even 2019 we hit it off real well she we had the same interests i'll just say that we didn't officially meet up in person until i moved to atlanta in 2021 because she lives in south carolina and i was in new jersey new york so obviously coming to south carolina was not in the plans we building a friendship we're getting real close i get married 2021 she was already married for two years when we met so our husbands met they got super close we have this whole like family group chat we all close and dee 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 right we are like peas in the pod all of us i say peas in the pod i mean families meeting each other hanging out at each other's houses we even felt comfortable when we found out we were pregnant in 2022 that they were going to be our new baby's godmother and godfather so this all is catching me by surprise had to give you a little backstory yesterday i get a call ring 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 catches me off guard completely off guard homegirl says hey i have something to tell you i've been feeling this way for so long but mind you, as of recently, I've been telling my husband, I feel like something is off between me and her. Like, you know, when you have that feeling, ladies, like, you know, when you know, when you know, you have a feeling something is off. But everything kept flying over my head. She asked, can she call me? We get on the phone and she's like, all right, I got something to tell you for the past four or five years. I've never liked you. I've always been jealous of you. I've always hated you. You can predict. My mouth was like, what? I literally kept saying, what, 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 what are you talking about? We were just planning to see each other next month. All of us, our families getting together and having a good time for the holidays. And this is how you were feeling the entire time. But that's not even a half of what she had to say. She goes on to say that she was always praying against the things that I was praying for. So when I was telling her that my husband and I were praying for a baby, and this was two years ago, almost three years ago, when I was telling her these things, she said that she was praying and hoping that we wouldn't conceive. She was praying and believing that when we were pregnant, the baby wouldn't be born. When I was pregnant around like 26, 27 weeks, you know, when you get tests for gestational diabetes, I was actually diagnosed with gestational diabetes. I had to retake the test. So, you know, you call your friend, you tell your friend, whatever, like, hey, like pray for me and all these things girl said that she was praying that the opposite would happen of what we wanted which is of course for the gestational diabetes to be removed so that i can have a healthy pregnancy if you know anything about gestational diabetes in itself you know that that's nothing to play with when you are pregnant at all so the fact that she found that fun and i still called her a best friend and she knew that this baby was going to be her godchild and she felt comfortable feeling that way she was talking about how you know uh when they found out that they were pregnant they told um uh these people that you know what we are we are pregnant and all of that and i was thinking about this yesterday i was listening to a lady and she was saying we should not rush to tell people 
about our successes or about something that just happened for example pregnancy right she mentioned this pregnancy that you are two weeks pregnant you are already telling everyone is saying that there are times where you just have to be quiet for a while because people will abort your blessings people she was just advising us to you know to have discernment and to take some time to be quiet and let things marinate for a bit don't be in a hurry to be telling everyone about your blessings especially sensitive and keep it yourself i honestly understand people who who never tell people about their pregnancy until <laughs> until they're like nine months or something blows my mind so anyways the whole time we're on the phone i'm just listening i'm just quiet because i i'm trying to like take in everything that she's saying because i actually can't believe that these things were going over my head one time while I was pregnant, it was November of 2022, and that was due March 2023. I was I came to her because I had a feeling like something was off. And again, like when you feel something is off, you really need to take heed and pray about whatever it is that you feel is off of your spirit. So I said something was off. I addressed it with her, and we agreed that we both can do better as friends. I should have took that as a sign right then and there to dead this friendship. But she assured me that what I was feeling off was not the case. She was genuinely there to be my friend. The same time I felt this way was the same time I had the gestational diabetes and she felt a way about me being pregnant, I suppose. She continued on to say that she's always felt competition between us. Whenever I started my photography business, she felt competition in there. Whenever she seen that we were essentially making money moves, I'll just say it like that, she felt some sort of way about that. So last year, December, November, I don't know if you've seen on my TikTok page, if you scroll down, I shared that we were facing eviction, right? She knew about that and her husband knew about that because we were all close. We we're like family. So like we're going to the people that we're the most closest to, to pray for us and to cover us that of course that we don't end up on the street with a nine month old. This girl prayed that we would not have a home to live in. She prayed, she said this out of her own mouth. She was just hoping that we would end up homeless with the nine month old that is her godchild, and then still had the audacity to open up her home for us to live there, even though she was feeling these things. She said that it made her feel like they were doing better than us. This is a best friend, somebody that you're confiding in. I was almost like dishing information for her to pray against on me. Better for me wasn't the fact that she didn't like me this whole entire time. It's that I gave her access to my child, the one that I have prayed for to be here. And I entrusted her to come into agreement with me for this baby. But she had a whole separate agenda this entire time of canceling his life. And I entrusted her to be his godparent. I'll leave, I'll leave it here because she says way more. If you want to hear a part two, then let me know in the comments. But I'm going to just leave one thing for you ladies. Vet your friendships the same way that you are going to vet your relationships. The same way that you're going to pray and seek God about if this is the person that you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with. You need to be praying and asking God, is this a friendship I need to be pouring myself out into? You need to pray and ask God for discernment when we're sharing things with friends. That is women. Sometimes we just want to get all close because we like the same things. We like content creation. We all just going to be friends. We like photography. We just all going to be friends. And no, like ask God, what is the kingdom purpose here for our friendship? Is this somebody I'm going to do life with? Is this somebody I should share my deepest, darkest secrets with? Is this somebody that I can trust with my entire life? Is this somebody I could bring around family? The list goes on. You need to vet your friendships the same exact way that you're going to be vetting your relationships. And that's one thing that I took away from this. And these things for sure would never happen again. So as I was reading the comments and under this video, there were people who were asking her, are you sure you didn't miss any red flags? I'm pretty sure you, you, you ignored some red flags. Come on, this is just unbelievable. But I honestly do think it's possible. It's possible that there were no really like red flags screaming in her face saying this person is dangerous for you. Like she was saying, she felt that something was off. So the friend was saying, I kept this to myself. No, no one else knows, not even my husband.
So I honestly believe that it was possible that she didn't notice, you know, any red flags screaming in her face saying, this person is not good for you. Because all this person did was pray against her, but she didn't do anything that you can see with a naked eye. I mean, she even offered them accommodation when they were about to be evicted. So there was nothing really tangible and physical that she could use as a justification to say, you are not good for me. It, it's not impossible that she didn't see anything because I honestly believe that we have different kinds of people who don't like you. There are people who will show you with their words, with their actions. There are people who will be nice to your face, but behind your back, they, they will say all kinds of things about you or do all sorts of things that will compromise you or that will cause harm to you. But this person didn't do most of those things. All this hatred was just something that she kept to herself, that she was entertaining, that she kept to herself. So I honestly do believe that it is possible to miss all these red flags. It is possible. There are people who know how to, you know, hide these things something we should be judging her and saying I'm pretty sure you missed something you people like to ignore red, red flags but anyway so tell me what you think about this video do you think it's possible to miss red flags even though you have been friends with someone for like five years or do we give friends way too much grace that we end up being in friendships that do not serve us that do not serve us or do we ignore red flags because we are afraid of being alone? We are, we are afraid of losing those people. So you just stick around because you don't want to. You are afraid of being alone, of losing that person. But anyway, thank you for watching. Bye, my daisies. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Bye.